good afternoon and welcome. This is a special place for me, and uh, today we have a special reason to be here that might not be so obvious at first, but uh, today we are here to celebrate the city of Akron's water system, which is like a birthday today, 100 years old. And we, I think, have a hard time in this period of time when probably every one of you has something, probably a newer model than this, I shouldn't show it, I should just say cell phone, or a handheld computer, or an iPad, or a pod, or any number of other things that instantaneously we have communication and information at our fingertips, literally, that we carry with us. And so it probably is hard for us to think back a hundred years to imagine what it would have been like for somebody standing very close to here, about a block away, sitting in a meeting saying, I think we should plan for the future. And we're going to have to ask people to pay for it. That would be different than the thought process today. No one wants to pay for anything. But we need to develop a water system that will allow the city of Akron to be able to have all of the water that it needs for the next 100 years. I would argue they plan probably for the next 300. But someone sitting over in that office who didn't have a car or a helicopter rode a horse and started to look at property along the Cuyahoga River east and north of here up through Portage County and up into Geauga County. And now today we're the largest landowner in Geauga County where we have two of our reservoirs we draw our water all the way from Kent, but just imagine, and I think the important part of connecting up with young people here at the Inventors Hall of Fame School is your imagination and your thought process needs to be the same because you are the leaders of the future and people who are leaders need to look out into that future and the good ones are able to see way beyond what many of us see right in front of our nose. And so it is very appropriate that we connect these two issues, these two ideas and concepts, young people learning creative ideas and thinking for the future, and people who did it a hundred years ago today to create one of the best water systems in the country. Just uh, last week, City Council passed legislation creating, uh, I'm sorry, March 22nd, 1912, the City Council of Akron passed legislation creating the water department that today is recognized as one of the, the top water systems in the United States. And I mentioned last week because I know City Council uh, has been talking about this and we're fortunate to have Ken Jones, I've asked Ken to stand up, who is the City Council person who is the chairperson of Public Utilities uh, Committee. Can we thank you for coming? <laughs> a few months ago, we uh, had an opportunity to talk with some of the individuals here who are the coaches uh, and, the, and, and mentors for the young people here, and they offered to participate in helping us to celebrate what is best about our water utility. So I'm going to ask uh, someone who has done a great job in leading this uh, tremendous success, uh, successful school, Tracy Buckner, our principal, to come up and talk about what the eighth graders here have been doing. Ms. Buckner. Good afternoon, as Mayor Pasqualic said, I am Tracy Buckner, and here they call me the instructional leader, but I'm also known as the building principal. And I happen to be the building principal of the greatest middle school, I think, the National Inventors Hall of Fame School, the Center for Science, 
technology, engineering, and mathematics learning. Now here we are a multifaceted community. We're not just going to groom the future scientists and engineers of the world, but perhaps the future artists. And I say that because art and business is going on now, just right up there on tier level B. And as you exit today, if you'd like to stop by and take a look at some of the art on display from our learners, it would be great. They will receive a $145 savings bond, and there's a beautiful, beautiful work. But it is with great enthusiasm that I greet you today on behalf of my outstanding teaching staff who sprinkled throughout the audience and our energetic learners who are quieter than I've ever seen them today. We are charged to provide the highest quality education experience for students that ensures creativity and inventive thinking through a focus on science and mathematics. And when we were asked to share in this historic moment with the city of Akron, we were delighted that the work that we do here each day is being recognized and valued by our community. Our school is creating a history of its own, thanks to the vision of Mayor Plaswellick, who campaigned for the National Inventors Hall of Fame to come to Akron back in, I believe, 1987, I believe it was. And through his vision for many children to have a place where they can get fired up about learning, this space has been transformed into just that. With the collaborative efforts of Mayor Plaswellick and others from our community, we stand here today in a high quality learning environment that staff, that staff and students alike are proud to come to each day. Learners, are you proud to come here each day? Yes? Yeah. This is the time where you can be loud because there aren't going to be many moments. Are you proud to come here each day, STEM learners? Yeah! All right, that's great. Today you will hear from several of their classmates who are seated over here, who my program specialist, Beth Bugner, will introduce more formally to you in just a few moments. Beth coordinates our problem-based learning experience, which is a cornerstone teaching strategy here at our school. And she worked closely with our eighth grade team. I'd like to just recognize them for a moment. As staff, if you wouldn't mind standing when I call your name, Sherry Hankinson, who teaches language arts. water shui. Did you have to say shui at all in China? <laughs> you had a great interpreter. In France, I believe they call water lu. That's what I took when I was in school, unlike you guys who are all taking Chinese. And in Spain, it's called aqua. Here in America, we call it H2O or what? That's right. And when the kids came back from their field trip to the water treatment facility, they shared stories with great excitement about Lake Rockwell, the water filtration system in our city, and how such a simple compound makes a lasting impact in our daily lives. To our mayor and the city of Akron, we'd like to thank you for helping us to fulfill the true essence of an engaging partnership. It is because of our collaborative efforts that we will produce our first class of eighth grade learners who will matriculate into high school at the end of the school year. They will have the 21st century skills that they need to be a success at that level in college and beyond. Learners, will you please join me in a round of applause for Mayor Plaswellick as he returns to the podium. I know that all of you have done your studies so you know what's available to residents now. You visited the plant, you have an understanding of how that works, but let me go back one more time to think and ask you to think about the history and how we got to this point. Actually, when Akron was first founded many, many years ago, we had clear running water from local springs, just water that would run up. Maybe many of you in some of your neighborhoods still see some of that spring water. And in many instances, when people dug down a couple of dozen feet, they uh, could usually get water. But as Akron turned into an industrial town with people moving here, more people, companies moving to provide jobs, the water became dark, it had an odor, and there wasn't enough of it in many instances to put out fires 
that had cropped up various times during the city's uh, history. And in the summertime especially, there were numerous episodes of typhoid fever from the water that was taken from Summit Lake and local rivers. From 1880 until 1912, the Akron Water Works Company operated on Wooster Avenue, what was normally called, what, what used to be called Wooster Avenue, where Lane Field is now located. And in 1910, Akron Mayor William Sawyer conducted a study, and Akron began, what I described earlier, buying up land in the Cauga River watershed. In September 1911, the water plant owned by Akron Water Works broke down completely. Firestone Tire Rubber Company stepped in to help and pumped water from Akron water mains while the plant was being fixed. Now keep in mind, this was where Lane Field is now, for all of you who are familiar with that, behind Miller South High School. In December 11th, the voters of Akron approved the purchase of Akron Water Works to form their own utility, which occurred on March 22, 1912. And in 1913, Akron began construction of a dam on the Cauga River, which created what you know, many of you saw uh, recently, Lake Rockwell, and we created the current water plant. Since 1915, Akron has continuously been able to get high quality water from this facility to provide for the needs of its citizens. Now to tell you a little more about the story of our water department and how it impacts our safety, our environment, and literally our way of life, I'd like to introduce the acting manager of the Akron Public Utilities Bureau, Jim Hewitt. Jim. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank the Mayor and Council for their consistent support of Akron Public Utilities through the years. It's through that support that we've been able to provide exceptional customer service to the citizens of Akron. I'd also like to recognize several members of my leadership staff that are here with me today. I have Jeff Bernowski, Doug Smith, and Jessica Glucheski from our water plant. I have Greg Lesh from our utilities engineering, Brian Gresser from our wastewater plant, Rick Forsyth from our water distribution <laughs> facility. I'd also like to thank all the past and present employees of the Akron Public Utilities who have allowed us to succeed in our goal of providing clean water to our citizens and celebrate our 100 year anniversary today. By the numbers, the Akron system is, the city of Akron is 62 square miles, but our water system is actually 125 square miles. Water system consists of one treatment plant located just north of Kent and Franklin Township has 43 miles of water mains to deliver water to Akron and our surrounding communities. It has 15 water storage facilities, 14 pump stations, 1,200 hydrants for fire protection, and nearly 1,200 miles of water mains to deliver water to your homes. The water treatment plant was built between 1913 and 1915. It has undergone numerous technological upgrades throughout the years and still remains in excellent condition today the plant itself is rated for 67 million gallons of water by the Ohio EPA. We're currently producing around 35 million gallons of water today out of that facility, which equates to about 13 billion gallons of water a year is being delivered to our 92,000 businesses, industries, and households, which is about 300,000 residents in Akron and our surrounding communities. The source of Akron's drinking water, is what has been mentioned, is the Upper Cuyahoga Water River watershed. This is located in Jaga County and portions of Portage County. It's 207 square miles of land that our river flows through. The river flows through two large reservoirs in Jaga County and one large reservoir in Portage County. The uppermost reservoir is the 420 acre East Branch Reservoir near Burton, Ohio. This was completed in 1939 and has a storage capacity of 1.5 billion gallons. The second and largest reservoir is the Wendell Ledoux Reservoir. It's located in, in Jaga County also. This facility is 1,500 acres <laughs> and stores nearly 6 billion gallons of water. The third reservoir, Lake Rockwell, is located just outside of Kent and provides water directly to our treatment plant. This was completed in 1915. The 770-acre reservoir holds in excess of 2 billion gallons of water. Akron owns nearly 16,000 acres in our watershed. Our managers, we manage our watershed by promoting best practices of water quality protection and property ownership to provide natural filtration and moderate runoff to protect our source water. 
As presently developed, the watershed may produce in excess of 120 million gallons a day for treatment and delivery of water to the citizens of Akron. Through the history of the Akron water system, one of the most influential persons in the history of our development was Wendell Ledoux. He began working for the city of Akron in 1919 and ascended to the bureau manager in 1933, where he remained there until 1963 and he retired after 44 years of service. Wendell Ledoux was a visionary and, and con conservationist. He was focused on conserving and protecting our water long before this was a popular notion. He is always planning for the future and saw the importance to expand our water system. So we would and employ practices to protect our source water and before there's any problems with our reservoirs. During his time with the utility, he was responsible for a land use program consisting of farming, orchards, <laughs> maple sugaring, cattle and sheep raising, fish and wildlife protection. This allowed us to beneficially use our watershed and generate revenue while protecting our source water. He employed hundreds of needy families during the Great Depression. He saw the need to keep leaves out of our water because tree leaves, similar to tea leaves, provide color to our water, make it difficult for us to treat the water. Because of this, we planted dense screens of evergreens along the shorelines of our reservoirs to keep the leaves out of the water and the water clear. He saw the need to expand our watershed property. We continued to buy property to, to the point where we own nearly 16,000 acres of land in our watershed. He saw the need to expand our water capacity. We built the East Branch Reservoir, the Mogador Reservoir, and what is named in his honor as the Ledoux Reservoir to ensure adequate water supply for our future generations. When the Ledoux Reservoir was completed in 1962, there was 285,000 residents in Akron, but it allowed us the, the ability to serve nearly one billion people. Back in September of this year, we met with the, the STEM school staff and we asked the eighth grade students to break into teams to study our water plan treatment process. They prepared projects on, on the water system and gave presentations to our leadership staff. These presentations were exceptional. We were very happy to view these presentations and hope that everyone gets a chance to see them today and enjoys them as much as we did. As utility leaders, we firmly believe that the future of our industry, the future leaders of our industry, just may be located in this room with us today. With this, I'd like to hand it back to the mayor. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. I uh, want to just mention, as a little aside, that Jim uh, is going to get a promotion next month. Jim will add the title of city engineer, so he will be taking over the engineering department. He's filling in for an individual who retired, who uh, is with us today, and I'd like to introduce Mike McGlinchey and thank him and all of the retirees who have done a great job keeping the system going through difficult times in the 30s and difficult times in the most recent few years. And uh, every memory that I have of people in the water department is of the professionals who really cared. And uh, it's sort of interesting, I can only remember two managers, Dave Crandall, who was there for many, many years. I did have an opportunity as a young councilman to meet Mr. Ledoux, which was a fascinating thing to actually hear. Much the same in many ways as what many of you will be doing when you hear inventors come back and talk to you about their thought process. Hopefully that will be helpful. But as Jim mentioned in his presentation, the water department staff, present staff, actually came up with this idea of asking the STEM school to look at ways of how the water impacts our lives. And I thank uh, Principal Buckner for agreeing, and she assigned somebody who took this to heart. And uh, Elizabeth Buckner will explain to us uh, what the projects were all about. So I'd like Elizabeth to come on up and take over. Elizabeth. Good afternoon. Earlier this year, our eighth grade class was engaged in a problem-based learning unit centered on fresh water purification. 
The problem statement, which was the focus of our unit, centered on water sampling, water testing, and analyzing these results to inform our watershed community of ways to reduce pollutants from humans in our water source. We were fortunate enough to work with Jessica and Jeff and others as we, were, we toured the water treatment facility where we gained a deeper insight and perspective of the water treatment process. I would now like to introduce several of our eighth grade learners who will represent the collaborative efforts by the groups which work to solve this problem. They will give you a very brief look into the work which was completed by our learners here at the STEM school. We'll begin with our history group. Maya Colbreth, Maurice Culp, Elliot Graves, Madison Jones, Shania Lewis, Sarah Nickick, Malika Rice, and Kylie Sees. The water company was organized by people living on West Market Street. Akron began operating a water system on August 15, 1915, Lake Rockwell, named after Mayor Frank Rockwell. Akron's growing businesses caused the population and need for clean water to greatly increase. This is a graph showing the population growth from 1825 to the 21st century. It's 1825 and the population of Akron is growing rapidly. Let's see how that affects the Akron water supply. Welcome to Akron. You're the new family in town, right? What made you move to Akron, Ohio? We came here because of my job. We immigrated here for a better life. Wow, that's great. Industry has been booming lately. It's true. Many industries have come to Akron, causing the population to increase rapidly. As the population and industry increases, so does the demand for water. In the 1880s, a new city hall, a new health department, and a new water pumping station was under construction. At this time, Akron was leading the country in technology with the telephone and telegraphs. In May 1881, the privately owned Wooster Avenue Waterworks was put into service. In 1890, 30 additional private wells were being drilled. Diseases of water supply were being looked at very closely in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Looking ahead 38 years, American scientists began looking closely at water for diseases in 1870. Although that's a great thing, the public is beginning to demand clean water reservoirs for the city's use. Back to work. We must get samples from this water and analyze them to ensure the safety of the people of Akron. With the rapid growth of Atkins population, not only do we need a lot of water, we need a safe water source. Yes, ma'am. We wouldn't want the public to become ill from water diseases like cholera or yellow fever. We need a good water source, one free from disease so we don't have outbreaks like the others we've seen around the world. Agreed. Now we just have to satisfy the public by setting up water reservoirs to keep them safe. Some of the founding fathers of Lake Rockwell is Mayor Charles Kimball, C.B. Raymond, F.A. Barber and E.G. Bradbury, William T. Sawyer, John Gutierrez, and Mayor Frank W. Rockwell. It is now the early 1900s. Finally, the construction of the Akron Water Treatment Facility has begun. This will provide a clean source of water for the whole city. This will help the Akron area immensely. It will satisfy the needs of citizens and the new industries in Akron. Lake Rockwell will be an excellent source of water. Only two years later, the Akron Water Treatment Facility begins treatment for 96 square miles and 33,000 people. The Akron Water Treatment Facility has been a great success. It will be a reliable resource for many years to come.
Trains were used to bring liquid chlorine <coughs> to the water treatment plant, and it is now stored at the Clearwell building. Steam and coal generated pumps were originally used, but now they use electric generated pumps. When it was first built, the treatment facility workers lived on the property. The water facility and dam have been around for a hundred years now. The wall, router, the wall router building that I first went to was built in 1953, but they built a new one outdoors in 1970. Originally they added chlorine at the beginning of the treatment, but now they add it at the end. This is a picture of the Akron water treatment plant today. Next, we will hear from our filtration. <laughs> Next, we will hear from our filtration and water treatment group, Aaron Bowie and Daniela Flanders. Good afternoon. Our challenge was to create and build a way to filter the water. Here is our dirty water. So first we have the screen filter. The screen filter filters out fish, rocks, sticks, and other large sediment. Then we have the co coagulation tanks and UV exposure. The UV exposure um, sanitizes the water of bacteria and other diseases. It also, the coagulation also makes the smaller sediment that floats in the water come together and sink to the bottom. Then we have the layer filter. The layer filter is a stacked filter of larger, from larger to smaller holes that um, as the water passes through it filters the unseeable sediment that we can still have in our water. Now we have water that's ready to drink. <laughs> Next we'll hear from our water regulations group, Jalen Larios and Spencer Pearson. Good afternoon, we are the Water Regulations Group. We had a simulated debate on whether we need the EPA to regulate our water or not. We discussed three main topics. First, we discussed economic benefits with removing um, regulations against the need to know our water is safe. The second topic we discussed was the fact that people could drink from bottled water. Um, countered with the fact that plastic bottles could cause other environmental problems. Finally, we discussed the EPA's regulation of the fracking process. We learned that while fracking may make oil and gas less expensive, it has been suspected of contaminating people's well waters. Thank you. Next, we will hear from our water sampling group, represented by Jay Sean Gates. The sampling group researched how the Akron Water Treatment Facility takes samples, why they take samples, and where they take samples. We get our water from Lake Rockwell, which is located in Kent, Ohio. Our water facility serves 10 cities, including Fairlawn, Copley, Norton, Barbadam, Coventry, Springfield, Mogador, Tomich, Moreau Falls, and of course, Akron. There are 47 sampling sites in our watershed. The purpose of sampling is to predict the quality of water from numerous locations. This ensures an accurate representation of the watershed region in all areas potentially impacted by factors such as animals, businesses, factories, farming, and humans. Thank you. Next, our water source group, Angie Reguero and Nina Serath. Good afternoon. 
Black Ridge Water Source is Lake Rockwell. We visited Lake Rockwell to study, analyze, and test their water. Why is Lake Rockwell our water source and not somewhere else? Our water source used to be Summit Lake, but due to pollution, our current water source is Lake Rockwell. How does our water compare to other places? Lake Rockwell is like 30 out of 100 on a chart of America's water. Akron's water is very energy efficient. Thank you. To show how community members affect our watershed, Keep Akron Beautiful allowed us to borrow the Enviroscape. The Enviroscape was used as an example of Lake Rockwell's watershed. To show different ways that contaminants can get into our watershed, we use food coloring. The food coloring represented things such as runoffs from cars, farms, factories, and waste from animals. Our presentation helped inform our local watershed community about ways to prevent our water from being contaminated and keep it safe. Thank you. And finally, our extension group, which infused language arts curriculum into our PBL, Maya Frazier, Connor Seitzinger, and Dylan Stiles. Hello and good afternoon. In our presentation, we, we did the language arts portion of the PBL, and we also learned how water inspired us. Good afternoon. I'm here to talk to you guys about Emerson and Thoreau. What Emerson and Thoreau were is that they were writers and poets, but what they mainly were is they were transcendentalists. What transcendentalism is about, it's about using nature to better yourself. And they were also inspired by Walden Pond, which is what we are inspired by to write our poems. The wind dances in on trotting horses as it stops in the Golden Valley, looking about through its fiery eyes and rages past in a mighty gallop. The rain falls down, drop by drop, just like a second hand on the clock. The leaves fall down and hit the ground, so very quiet that you don't hear a sound. The worms squirm around up out of the ground to get a breath of air or to get out of town. If you sit and listen one time this year, you will hear and know that the sounds of nature are near. On behalf of our eighth grade learners and learning coaches, we hope you enjoyed the glimpse into our study of water. Thank you, Mayor Pasquale, for being here today and allowing, allowing us to share in this special tribute to our Akron Water Treatment Facility. We'll turn things back over to you at this time. Probably nine out of ten of our residents don't know what you know about our water system even after these hundred years so hopefully we'll be able to use this video and be able to play it so that maybe some of our residents will learn a little more about our water system how it came about and the importance of maintaining it and continuing the commitment that people made hundreds of years ago I thank you very, very much. This has been a great opportunity, I think, for us to highlight something in, in a special way. I want to add uh, to what Jim Hewitt said and what I said earlier. People talk about public employees and sometimes not in a positive way, but we have very, very dedicated people, people who put their lives at risk, literally going down into trenches and doing things to make sure that the citizens of Akron are served. And I believe that the people in the water department are as dedicated as any group. And I want to thank all of them. Some of them are here. I'm not going to ask all of them. Uh, why don't I have, have all of you stand? I want to introduce all of you. But all of the employees, President <laughs> Thank you. We couldn't bring all of them because somebody has to be out there making sure that the spigots run when we're turning it on right now. But uh, I, I really do. I obviously have a sincere uh, belief that this is one of the most important things that I've ever done uh, in my career, to create this wonderful facility that you, because of your hard work and the hard work of your coaches, now uh, can take great pride in the accomplishments, something I don't know I had a vision and understood that many years ago, that if we ask more of you, you would respond as young people, just as young people have. And we've asked you to help us celebrate, and you've done this in a dramatic way, so I really appreciate it. Getting the information out, 
I have to ask, I don't know that there's anyone else here from the press, but is there any, are there any questions? You sure you don't want to ask them tough questions like you do me? <laughs> Come on, I'll just pick out one of them. Go ahead. <laughs> well, let me once again thank you for your hard work, and hopefully you've learned something. It takes in this world people who have a vision to want to change. And I couldn't help standing back there thinking about the connection. As your principal mentioned, I just returned last evening from China, and I've had the good fortune to be involved with the U.S. Conference of Mayors traveling to places in Africa, China, other places in the world that I never would have dreamed. But if you think this activity that happened 100 years ago is just kind of old technology and it really doesn't matter anymore, I will tell you within the last year or so, a young person was nominated as one of the top inventors in the country, recognized for his new system of creating safe water in places where they don't have electricity. I don't know if you heard, all of you, that now we use electricity to run the plant. There are places in China and Africa out in the little villages where they don't have electricity. They don't have all the money to spend on chemicals, whether it's chlorine or anything else. So how do you take water that comes naturally but gets contaminated naturally and turn it into safe drinking water? Well, that's the challenge. And it's still out there in many, many ways to be able to solve. So maybe some of you sitting right here in this room will be the creative minds that look at that issue and solve that, not just for Akron, Ohio, but maybe for the world. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And let me ask you, with all of the information that you've gathered and learned, are there any questions that you need to ask? Because I have some experts here with me that might be able to answer any questions. Anybody? How about, how about those of you who didn't get to work on this? Any questions? See, your classmates were so clear in all of the information, you know everything now. All right, well, thank you once again. I appreciate Mrs. Buckner and Mrs. Buckner to, uh, to help us in this special day. And we probably should have celebration balloons and, uh, and confetti and maybe some cake or something, but I think rather than that, I should